So in this video, we're going to look at the Western Veil Nebula. This is one I did earlier in the month, and it was only eight five-minute exposures, 40 minutes in total. So this is the stacked version. So we're going to have a look at how it's came out. Come out. So click on the screen transfer function. And if we stretch the image, you can see straight away got a lovely green tint to it. So I'm going to unlink the channels and stretch it again. And you can see it looks a bit, a bit better, better, right? So considering how short a time I managed to image it for, there's a lot of information and data there which we can work on. So what, what I'm going to actually do on this one is actually going to split the channels into RGB and process it as if I was processing hydrogen, sulfur and oxygen. So we'll stretch each of these. There we go. And the first thing I'm going to do now is a dynamic background extraction. I'm going to go to sample generation, change the default sample radius to 10, 10, not 120. Samples per row 15 and minimum sample weight 0.2. Then click generate. And you can see it's now loaded the screen up with a load of crosses. Go down to target image correction, select traction, and then we'll execute. Close that down. And if I stretch that now, and then we'll stretch this one as well. This is the background gradient. So this is what it's removed from the image, which we don't really want. So if we do compare the two, it's very subtle, but there are slight improvements and a bit more detail on the new version. So we're going to close that one down, minimize that, and we're going to get rid of that one. We're now going to do the same thing on both the green and the blue channels with the same figures. And subtract again, execute. There we go, and then we'll have a look at the background gradient. So this is what it's removed again. So if we compare the two, a little bit sharper, I think. So we'll minimize that one, and we'll dispose of that one. Repeat the process on the blue channel, with this, again with the same figures. There we go. Close that down, stretch. Just out of interest, again there's the gradient that we removed. Again, just a little bit sharper. So minimize and we'll get rid of that one. Now we're going to use something called Easy Processing Suite. This is a free script that you can download. Um, if you need any help working out how to do it, let me know and I'll uh, point you in the right direction. But we're going to do deconvolution. Now I only do this on one channel and this will always be on the, the red channel or the hydrogen alpha. There's our preview. So what it does, it just sharpens the image. If you, I find if you do this on the blue and the salt or the green channels, you tend to get some horrible distortion around the stars. But by just doing it on the one channel, it's just enough to crisp it up a little bit and doesn't affect the stars. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a new star mask. OK, so this is going to take a few minutes. And so while we leave that running, I'll pause the video and then I'll come back and continue. So now you can see that we've got our raw star mask, so all the stars have been removed. So what we're going to do is go up here, tick alternative version of image. And then we're just going to do an STF stretch on the stars. And we're happy with that. Now we're going to create the background mask. Takes a few seconds. There we go. And then we'll okay. click the deconvolution tab. And then we're going to generate PSF. This is basically to do with how it's going to sharpen up the stars. Again, this one takes a little bit of time. There we 
we go and then once we've got that image there we can just press the run easy decon again this can take a little bit of time depending on your pc so i'm going to pause the recording and we'll come back when that's done okay so now we've got our sharpened image so i'm happy with that again so just going to minimize that one for the moment don't need all this so we're going to get rid of all that So next stage is we're going to use the script again so yeah the next stage is we're going to look at using the script again and we're going to use easy processing suite again but this time i'm going to use the denoise option okay so and we'll we're going to do this on each of the channels so do one in turn and it's as simple as loading that up, press E, run, easy decon, uh, denoise, and let it do its thing. It's quite slow, so again, I'll run all three channels through, and then once all three have been done, we'll resume the recording again. Okay, so now we've done our denoise on our RGMB, we can then close down files here. Okay, so unstretch each of the images and then I'm going to go back to the script again and easy processing suite and this time I'm going to do a soft stretch I'm going to do that on each of the R, G and B and then we'll minimize that one Go. so now we can go on to process and we're going to go to channel combination and we're just going to put red in the red and we'll put green in the green and blue in the blue we're doing a Hubble palette mix on something else um, like the rosette nebula then we would probably do that slightly different with the RNG press the circle button and then we now have our denoised stretched image. So I am quite pleased with that one straight away. And the first thing I'm going to do now is SCNR. And I'm going to remove, hit on that. That's going to remove the green tint. There we go. So that is our stretched version. We're now non-linear and we're going to curves transformation. This is where we can just mess around with the curves just to try and brighten it up, darken the background, whichever you want to do it. So we've got a trial and error and seeing which, which you prefer sometimes. It might be a combination of a couple. Do that one again, that's worked quite well. Now drop that one down, drop the background a bit. A little too much, I think. Let's just a bit of fine tuning. Okay, and HDR and to lightness and lightness mask I'm going to leave it at six layers to start with and see how we get on just run that through and then we'll have a look So you can adjust the layers to suit. I quite like that one there, brings out a little bit more detail. And what we'll do now is we'll do a star mask. We'll reset that. 
I'll go scale of three, large scale to zero. We'll do three on the smoothness and we'll do contours. Again, sometimes it's a case of trial and error with the star mask. There's so many different settings that you can try. There we go. Oh, yeah, that looks good to me. I'm going to apply that. Click on mask, show mask. Get rid of that. And then go to morphological transformation. Drop that down to morphological selection. Change that to 0.2. Change it to seven. Apply that. Just want a bit of reduction in the star, so go and then we can just go before and after. Yeah, like that. It's not too much, but enough just to help bring out some of the detail. So what I would do. Have I still got my mask now. Do another mask on the same settings. Apply that. And I'll invert the mask. And we'll go to MLT, multi scale linear transform. Now, the bias setting, we're going to change that to 0.1 on level 2 and same on level 3. And run that through. And what that does, as you can see, just sharpens up the background. The star masks there just to protect the stars, otherwise, you kind of put them back to where they were. So you can remove that. And we'll do the local histogram equalization. If you can see on the full well, amount, it, it looks quite dreadful. Take that back to zero to start with and then try it back more point one. So it can quite easily go a little bit too far. But I find about one point five is good. Okay, we'll apply that. All that does is just adds a little bit of sharpness. Again, we can adjust the settings or we can take it out. It's all a lot. At this, this stage, stage, it's more personal taste, I think. Okay, so again, zoom in. To before and after, I think it just has a little bit more definition, so I'm quite happy with that. So that's yeah. nearly done. I'm just going to go to curve transformation, and then I'm just going to just have a little play around, see whether I can improve any of the contrast. Yeah, quite like that. Drop that down a little bit. Again, you can go a little bit too far sometimes. Zoom in, so a little yeah, bit of noise there, but then that's expected on such a short session on there of only 40 minutes. So I'm really happy with that. What I might do sometimes is sometimes I do a duplicate and then I'll go back into denoise and do one last run through and see if we can just smooth the image up again. So that's the clone, we'll leave that on the clone image. So I'll run that through. And then I'll come back to you and see what you think. Okay, so we've now done the easy denoise again. So we'll put the two side by side and just zoom in a little bit. And so there's both images. There we go. So yeah. So the one on the right is the original version 
And on the one on the left is the one where we've denoised it a little bit more, taken a bit more of the noise out. So definitely does work. Um, not so noticeable at that level, but um, certainly when you zoom in it is. So that's a quick process uh, or how I would process the Western Vale. Um, I'll try and redo the video again with interruptions next time. Uh, but hopefully that's enough to get you going and help you along the way on processing. <laughs>